In preview activity 1.7, we're going to look at the behavior of a function given by f, the graph here, by looking at its limit at some values, its function at some values, and the derivative if it exists at some values. So, first off, let's talk about the limits and see if they exist or not, and if not, we'll say why. So first off, as x approaches negative 3, what is the limit of f of x? So negative 3, we're right here. We can clearly see the function behavior. It looks like it ends up at 3. So that would be our limit as x approaches negative 3. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x, well, if we try to capture the y value, well, notice what happens is we get really close to negative 2. We get both a positive 2 and a negative 1. It can't be both. It has to be close to one value. So we would say that, in this case, the limit does not exist, DNE. What we're going to see is we need it to go to the same place as we come in from the left and the right, and that's what we're going to discuss in this section. The limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. Negative 1, if we look here, as we come in from the left and the right, we go to about the same place, which is about negative 3 and a quarter. So, looks like it exists, and it's about negative 3. We'll do it as a decimal, 3 point two, negative 3.25. As it goes towards 0, coming in from the left and right, both go to negative 4, some nice behavior there. So what we're looking for is that nice function behavior, something kind of smooth. Even if there's a hole there, we can still have a limit there. As we go towards 1, right here, also at about negative 3 and a quarter. As we go to 2, it's kind of hard to see exactly what's going on. It looks like we have a point right about there. We get that really um, fast oscillating graph. I would say it's right about here at about negative 2.5. And I would expect it to exist. We can't really see what's going on in all those oscillations. But it looks like it's going to be nice and it looks like it's going to be continuous so we can get a limit there. And then at 3, it's okay that we have an open circle there. The limit will still exist, and it'll be at, again, negative 2.5. So we only had one place where the limit didn't exist, and that's where we had this big break in the graph. We're going to examine that more in this section. Let's talk about the function values. f of negative 3, no problem. It's 3. f of negative 2, we look for the closed circle. f of negative 2 is negative 1. So even though the limit didn't exist, there's still a function value there at negative 2. f of negative 1. Now the limit was negative 3.25, but the function value is up here at 1. So notice, just because the limit exists doesn't mean it has to be the same as the function value. f of 0 is down here at negative 4. Okay, so it is the same as the limit. And we're going to look at the meaning of that in this section. f of 1, similar, is negative 3.25, and it's actually equal to that limit f of 2, assuming again, I think it's going to be continuous in those oscillations, and I think it also is going to be the negative 2.5. And then finally, f of 3, notice there's a hole at 3, and there's no other point at 3, so this would be a case where it does not exist. The function is not defined for that input. Okay, lastly, we're going to see where the derivative might exist and where it might not based on this graph. So first off, if we look at, at negative 3, well, we want to try and get a slope of the tangent. But notice right there, if we look at it with a ruler, the tangent line looks like so. But all of a sudden, at that same point, it also looks like this. It can't be one or the other. So that's actually not going to exist at that point. And we're going to summarize that again later this section. So this is just an intro. At negative 2, well, we've got a tangent line down here, but we've also got a tangent line up here. Can't have two separate tangent lines at the same point. It's also going to be a place where the tangent line is not going to happen, so the derivative does not exist at that point. At negative 1, first off, it looks like the tangent line is here, but the point's up here. So again, two possible tangent lines can't have that. It's going to be a place where the derivative does not exist. Down here at zero, that's nice and that's nice for us. It looks like we got a tangent line. It looks like we got a horizontal tangent. 
looks like f prime of 0 is going to equal 0. Uh, f prime of 1, it looks like we can get a, a tangent line in there. It looks like a line with a slope of about 1. So I'm going to say f prime of 1 is about 1. Now, as we get into f prime of 2, look at what happens. That line is pretty much vertical. When we have a vertical line, remember that the slope is undefined. Or we could say, just like we did before, the slope doesn't, the derivative does not exist at 2. So, vertical tangent means the derivative does not exist. Lastly, at 3, 3 is an interesting one. It looks like there should be a tangent line right here. Here's the problem. We don't have any function value at this point. If the function doesn't exist at that point, how can we have a tangent line at that point? So, while it looks like we should have a tangent line, we actually don't because that point does not exist, so the derivative at that point does not exist. We're going to take all these ideas in this section and formalize them to give us a, def a formal definition of continuity, a formal definition, and a formal definition of differentiability.